Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently, going outside of games and game development, and a little bit more into the realm of technology at large. So it's interesting because most games and just applications in general are developed with like C++, C Sharp, Java, those kinds of common languages, but there's so many other programming languages out there that have all kinds of like weird and wonderful quirks. So even though this channel, there's really three goals to this channel. One, to talk about how games work. Two, to do it in a way that doesn't sound like an instruction manual. And three, to make it accessible to everyone, whether you're a programmer or not. So I know this isn't directly related to games. Of course, I'm gonna make it about it because that's what I like to talk about. Now you could define the word uncommon in a lot of different ways, because there's some languages that you might not have heard of, but are really well known in like statistics or finance or some really specific field. So we're going to use, this is just a website I found. It gives a general ranking. Looking at it at a glance, it seems to be like kind of reasonable where you have like Java, C, C++ at the top. And then towards the bottom, you have stuff like Objective-C and R, which while they're not like weird languages, uh, maybe some of you haven't heard of them. But today we're going to cover a language that has not even broken the top 50 most common languages of last year, which is OCaml. So OCaml is a functional programming language, which is really different than what most game developers are used to, because in games, you always hear about object-oriented programming. And I'm not going to get into a whole course on what functional programming is, because there are people who will do that better than me, but the main difference between object-oriented and functional programming is that with object-oriented programming, let's say you have a game that has a bunch of different enemies in it. So you create an enemy class and then you create new classes for each type of enemy. So alien enemy, monster enemy, zombie enemy. Whereas in functional programming, you'd have a fixed set of objects. Like you just have one enemy object or class. And instead of making new objects to represent the different things you want in your game, you would add new functions that that class could call. So that's why it's functional programming. So one isn't really better than the other, but you probably won't see many games made in functional programming languages. Games are pretty naturally modeled with object-oriented mindset, but you will see a lot of functional programming in like financial institutions doing like high frequency trading and stuff like that. Personally, I used OCaml when I was learning how to build a compiler, because if you're wondering who actually uses OCaml, well, Facebook made their own programming language and the compiler for that language was also written in OCaml. It's a language that makes a lot of sense for like interpreting and parsing languages, regular expressions, that kind of thing. The website is in the description. It's pretty straightforward how to set it up. You just can play around with it in your terminal, or you can go to this website, which I will be using, which is just a compiler where you can try out OCaml. All right, let's look at a few examples and quirks of the language. So when we want to declare a variable in OCaml, we say let x equal something. That could be a string, it could be an integer, and the type is automatically deduced. But now with a function, we'd say let f, and then all the parameters. So this is f with parameter or input a. We're gonna say it equals a plus x. Well, x is that variable we defined up there. And with OCaml, the variables are bound at the declaration of the function, meaning that even if we change x now, the x the function is going to use is always going to be the one that it knew at the time you define the function. So if we do f of 1, for example, we'll have 1 plus 5, which is 6, not 1 plus 7, which is 8. So one thing about OCaml is that there isn't exactly a traditional loop, like a for loop or a while loop, which is why it can be kind of difficult to wrap your head around how you'd make a game with functional programming. Pretty much all of these functions rely on a recursive mindset. And now some people would say recursion is bad for performance because if you know what this is, you know that recursion requires a lot of stack memory and sometimes you can have a stack overflow when a loop would have actually been perfectly fine. So tail recursion, which is what I'm using here, uh, is something that 
functions just like a for loop where it's a tail recursive call. It never uses more stack memory than a for loop would. So we have this non-recursive function on the outside where it takes n as an input. Let's say that's 5. We want to find the factorial of 5. And then this recursive helper function has i, which is kind of like a counter, and then the accumulator, which is where we produce our answer. And so this let in expression is basically uh, like a scope. It's like a scoping mechanism. I don't want to get too detailed into it, but we get factorial of 5, and that is 120, which if we check 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is the factorial of 5, we also get 120. Now, so that was tail recursion. What you're probably used to, if you're used to working with uh, recursion, is forward recursion. So we're going to do that, and we're going to sum up a list. This is my happy list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, that is, let's see, that's 15. So this is just going to show you guys uh, another cool trick you can do with OCaml, which is pattern matching. This can be really powerful. Uh, once again, we're not just iterating through the list saying for each value, add it to the last one. We're matching the list with if it's an empty list, then you'd add zero, but then x colon colon xx xs is another way of saying uh, of representing the entire list, and then with x you take the head of the list, and then you call some list on the rest of the list without that head. And we see that we do get 15, and you can also use a uh, list folding and list mapping. Those are other OCaml tricks. Um, yeah, so those are just a few interesting things about in uncommon language. I hope to do more of these if you guys find it interesting. So as always, let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. Have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you next time. Bye!